Hello. I'm about to read chapter five of Sarah Weeks's <clears throat> Save Me a Seat. This is the chapter on Ravi. The questions began as soon as I stepped out of the bus number 7A. How was your first day at Albert Einstein Elementary School, Ravi? My mother asked. Did you make any new friends? Do you have homework? Was the bathroom clean? How many other Indians are in your class? She asked, uh, I'm sorry, asked Parima. Ama and Parima have been waiting for me at the bus stop. I could see them stretching their necks to find me as soon as the doors had opened. <clears throat> Ama takes my green backpack off of my shoulder and carries it as we begin to walk towards our townhouse. I would rather carry it myself, but she insists. My teacher's name is Mrs. Beam, I tell them. Homework is just some reading, and the bathroom is fine. How many other Indians are in your class? Parima asks again. None, I say. I don't tell her about Dylan Sanrim, Sanrim because I know how Parima feels about A, B, C, Ds. As we pass the big pond located in the middle of our community, Amma points to it. Promise me you won't go near that water, Ravi. You might fall in and drown, and I've heard there are leeches, warned Parima. <laughs> the wind is blowing their saris. Amma holds onto hers with her right hand. Her left hand is still carrying my backpack. Did you eat your lunch? she asks. Please, Amma, can we get home first? I will tell you everything, I said. I promise. Why can't you tell us now? asked Parima. Did you not like the upama, Ravi? Don't blame me. Didn't I say it was too lumpy? When Parima wants to make a point, she goes on and on about it like it's the, it's the rotating end of elect, an electric drill. Uh, Paripa has a trick for that. He wears hearing aids, just like I do. And when Parima gets going on one of her long rants, he waits until she's not looking, then he turns it off. <laughs> Alma puts down my backpack. I can't believe what is happening. Right there in the middle of the street, she is checking my tiffin box to prove to Parima that I've eaten my lunch. A few kids walk by, looking at us curiously. I bend my head down, embarrassed, and I stare at the spot between my sneakers. My glasses slip down my nose, and I push them back up. It's empty, Alma says proudly, holding the box out for my grandmother to see. Parima sniffs. How do you know he didn't throw the lunch away? Alma doesn't say anything. She shakes her head and puts some of the tiffin box back into my backpack. She and Parima got along much better than when they didn't live in the same house. I reach over and grab my backpack from Alma, and then I run as fast as I can towards number 83. When we first moved into Hamilton Mews, I had trouble telling which house was ours because they all looked the same. But now I can tell without even looking at the number. Wait, Ravi! The door is locked. Paripa is napping and Appa is at the office, my mother shouts, running after me with keys waving. I wait on the doorstep until she and Parima catch up with me and open the door. As we enter the house, I close my eyes and breathe in. <sighs> the air is filled with the smell of Amma's cooking. She has already prepared this evening's tiffin, a plate of dosas and a cup of Ovaltine. The same thing I ate every day after school in India. I gave her a hug and whisper in her ear so Parima won't hear. The upama was delicious. Thank you, Raja, she whispers back. Dinner is later than usual because Appa's train is delayed and he doesn't get home until almost 8 o'clock. After each bite, Parima complains about the food. <laughs> the rasam is too ready and it tastes like dishwater. Have you heard of spices, Roshni? Appa comes to my mother's defense. Let her be, he tells Parima. Rashi is doing her best. She is not used to having to do all the cooking herself. And I am not used to having to eat her runny rasam. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Parima snaps back at him. Did you know that poor Ravi, Ravi had only lumpy upama for his lunch? <laughs> I glance at my mother and quickly change the subject. Most people at Albert Einstein Elementary School don't bring their lunches from home, I say. They buy school lunches, which cost $2.50. Is it vegetarian? Asked Ama. I wouldn't take their word for it, Parima interrupts before I can answer. I hear their salad oil has lard in it. I decide not to tell them about the chicken fingers. <laughs> so we get to see a little bit of the home life of Ravi, his mom and grandma, which is Parima and Appa, I think that's who, what it was, are fighting. They're living in such tight quarters. It's hard to live close together. We can relate to that during the pandemic when we had to stay home with our family and hardly ever get to go out. So next time we'll hear more about the character Joe in Save Me a Seat. Until then, Bye-bye.